What is going on everybody? Welcome back into Barley Studios. I hope you are having an amazing week and if you're not, maybe this little painting video from the Mad Mike Studios 68 Robot Man build can cheer you up. As you can see here from the previous highlight clips, we've already got his steel toe work boots painted as well as his notorious blue jeans. A little bit of dirt and grime there because he's a metal worker. And now we're going to move on to the painting portion for his fireman jacket. And I say fireman because it does have yellow and silver uh, hazard tape that goes around the entire jacket. So I'm going to make sure that I'm able to capture that later on in the build. As you know, through my painting style, I like to base coat a lot of the items with just a primary shadow of Mars Black. And that's what I'm going to do here in this very, very sped up uh, first portion of this video. So sit back and then we'll, we'll catch back here in a few moments. So as you can see here, I've really got a lot of the shadow kind of in place between his fingers, under his armpits, around the uh, kind of wrinkles on the jacket on his back. And uh, that's just going to allow me not only to force me to put enough paint on the, the item to cover those shadows up, but they'll kind of show through just a little bit. Now, if y'all don't know Mad Mike, y'all need to. He is an amazing artist, a great guy. Uh, he does live up in Canada. Canada, Canada, <laughs> and uh, he he uh, works in uh, making robots out of reclaimed metal, tin cans, and things like that. So definitely look him up, Mad Mike Studio sixty eight. So now what we're doing is I'm going to go ahead and just apply an overall layer to the actual uh, base that we've already created with the shadow. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up just a, uh, just a light color. A lot of this is yellow ochre, uh, uh, burnt umber, and I'm just kind of just creating a nice light uh, tan color. It does have a little bit of, uh, of a yellow tone to it, and that's okay. I'm not worried about that. We can kind of grunge it out and add some more uh, uh, titanium white later on in the process just to bring that tone up a little bit even more to where the light tan color is of his jacket it still comes out a little bit dark but i'm really okay with that i like kind of the dingy dark look uh, but then when you apply a light from above it really lightens up a lot and it shows those highlighted areas that come in later in the process so right now my goal is just to get the actual uh jacket covered in some kind of tan color and then i can kind of refine those wrinkles and the stitching and around all of the recesses of the pockets as we move through the process.
so as I continue to layer in some of those those tan colors, uh, it really starts to build up. Now it does cover up a lot of the Mars Black base shadow that I had applied, but it's not a horrible effect, and I'm really liking how it's still peeking through a little bit in certain areas. You really do have to like pay attention to look for it in a way, but at the same time, if you're just sitting back looking at it, those shadows do appear through the tan color and later on in the process during the dry brushing then it really does really does come alive so i'm so excited to be able to finish this portion out it really really comes alive and and brings forward the overall realism so as you can see it's really starting to thicken out quite a bit i'm really liking that i can start to refine the colors refine some highlights as i go i'm also going to go ahead and start putting that on the cuffs and the gloves although this is not the color the gloves are going to be i just wanted to go ahead and start getting some layers of paint on those gloves just so i can kind of work out any kind of minute uh, imperfections and build up some some texture to apply more paint to later so here I am going to start introducing the burr umber for shadow effect. A lot of this is very watered down. I'm using a smaller tip brush just so I can kind of just lay the, the uh, wash into the wrinkles and then I just kind of let it lay where it lays. But I also don't want it to drip. We don't want a drip effect on this. Uh, a little bit of dripping is okay as long as I can wipe it off or blend it in so that it looks like those are just the natural uh, wrinkles of the jacket. So I'll almost start to do this and then you can kind of see the overall depth of the wrinkles begin to take shape. I will go ahead and hop back in here and just say that, you know, as you, as you can see, even though I'm turning this on a little turntable, like a clay turntable, to, you know, to get to all of the nooks and crannies, I still miss places and I'm having to just even just put the first coat of tan color on some of the insides of the arms and things just because I rotated it and I just left it until it was later on in the process to get to that. So it doesn't matter what order I do it in, but I just need, <laughs> I needed to get to it at some point. Uh, and just because it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, I ended up leaving it towards later in, in the process. Here's that burnt umber wash. I'm really starting to apply this in a thicker manner now. Even if I do come in with some more tan color after this, just to kind of blend it in a little bit, this is really where it's just gonna start dinging out and applying a lot of depth. Now I had said a little while ago that I would not make water drops on on the actual you know wrinkles and stuff, but I do I do let a little bit of water accumulate there, so I made myself a little bit of a liar. But I do uh, let that before that dries. I do go ahead and use my trusted finger here to uh, kind of blend that in certain areas. But what, the most important thing is these aren't the final layers, you know. So I do come in here with a, uh, a thicker brush here in a moment and kind of blend those in certain areas just so that those water droplets aren't so prominent. But they're, they're really going to create a great effect. So I think it was right here that I, I come in with a larger brush and I start to kind of blend those in a little bit. But you'll be able to see if you just look at the back of uh, the jacket uh, when I come in and introduce lighter colors like I'm doing now. This is more of a titanium white of a yellow ochre. Uh, it's more so titanium white than anything else. And I'll start to introduce more and more titanium white. And this just brings up the overall, like um, I would say the dry, uh, tan used color that his jacket is you can tell that he's had his jacket for a long time and that it, it's just you know war, worn and torn and uh, it's just kind of just faded a little bit so I want to make sure that I'm able to capture that in some ways while also giving a lot of depth to the actual paint obviously his jacket uh, in the top right hand corner I'll post it there you can see it's a very light tan color consistently across the entire thing and i'm just trying to uh, add depth to it above and beyond just applying just one layer of paint to the jacket i wanted to have more depth than that so uh you know adding all of these layers in in a certain order it really allows me to kind of achieve just more of the artistic uh look than if i just use the same color over the entire jacket so it's just a really fun process 
when you get to come in and add those dry brushed highlight spots and bring up the tones around where the jacket uh, pockets and, and the, uh, the cuffs and his uh, the jacket opening around the front where his buttons and his uh, I guess that I think that he probably has velcro there because it's a fireman jacket would be uh, that it really kind of uh, it brings in the the fun and and uh, the artistic uh, what am I trying to say the artistic pride in the art and it really gives you a warm feeling knowing that, wow, that really is coming together really good. And that dry brushing is what really brings those those details and those highlights forward. Everybody always loves the highlight stages, but you got to do everything else before it, before you get to highlights, which is <laughs> a pain, but you got to do it. So this is really where it's going to start to come alive a little bit more. So as I, I round the corner to the last few details and layers of paint on the jacket itself, uh, the base color, then you'll kind of see that I'll go back and forth between the burnt umber wash. Uh, now that does have a, a little bit of raw umber in there as well, but uh, it, it really is more of a watered down brown. As long as it's a dark brown, then it's it's okay so you'll see i'll go back and forth between dry brushing with the titanium white and burnt umber uh, and that does have a little bit of raw sienna in there as well so don't act like it's just uh, yellow ochre and um, titanium white i do have other colors and pigments in there as well just to give it a little bit more richness than if it was just titanium white uh, titanium white just uh, obviously it just brings those uh, those tones down quite a bit but I want to bring in those other colors just so I can give it not not basic colors I want to give it intricate colors with more than one or two paints right I don't want it to be just flat colors so I want to bring in a few colors at a time so that I can just kind of create really really fun uh, paint colors apart from just your just titanium white and one other color if that makes sense so now I'm gonna go ahead and paint his gloves. Now these did take quite a few layers. I'm gonna post a picture of his gloves in the top right hand corner, three, two, one, there it is. Now these gloves are, uh, his are dark, like a forest dark brown, uh, green, I said brown, green, forest dark green. And you can see that they've been worn, uh, they're a little bit dingy, they're a little bit dirty. Uh, and that's that just means he's actually making a lot of art in the studio or the workshop. Good for him. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and try to capture that. Obviously, mine are going to be a little bit cleaner than his. I'm also going to make them a little bit brighter as well so that even when they dry, if they dry a little bit darker than my intention, then they still really look really good. I want them to be uh, a popping item against the the tan jacket, the blue jeans. So if you're looking at it, you, I want you to be able to really see that they're like a dark green color so there are some wrinkles that I had sculpted into the the, uh, the backs of the hands there uh, into the gloves and I'm gonna go ahead and try to make uh, like a just a brown color in there uh, I want to just create those, those shadows so that I can see those wrinkles when I'm done with it and then I'm also gonna paint his fireman cuff so you have the jacket sleeve that comes down and it is wrinkled. Then you have the fireman cuff, which is that secondary cuff from the inside jacket. And then you also have the cuff for the glove 
and then the glove itself. So although I didn't really define the glove cuff as much as I probably would have, it does have a clay uh, a divot there, like a clay ring. So if you're looking at it or you're touching it, you can see that that does have a cuff there. But it, do, it does have shadow where it goes into the jacket cuff. And then the jacket cuff has a, a shadow where it goes into the actual outer jacket of the fireman jacket. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next stage here. Uh, this was completely different uh, uh, painting session. Uh, and I did probably use about two sessions on this. We're using a, uh, a daffodil yellow folk art paint. I love this paint, you guys. You don't understand. I love this paint in every way. It is so thick. It is so rich. And although it's not Windsor & Newton, I'm going to use two paint Windsor & Newton paints. I'm going to mix some folk art in there. So we're using two different brands, two different types of paint. Both acrylics. Both amazing brands. If I ever become sponsored by any of these companies, I'm going to freak out. I'm going to scream like a little girl just because they're so amazing. So I wanted to, I, originally what I was thinking about doing is I was, I was going to create maybe like a, ho, like a shimmering holographic, like metallic yellow. And I was thinking, well, if I use the pearl, uh, white pearl metallic folk art paint and I mix it in with my yellows, even if it is uh, uh, dinged out by the yellows a little bit as far as the shine and the shimmer, as I introduce more of the uh, pearl uh, white, it would kind of bring that shimmer back up. You can kind of see as it's wet, it does have a little bit of a shimmer there, but as it dried on my parchment paper here, that shimmer kind of faded away a little bit. I could probably come in with a glaze afterwards and kind of uh, bring that, that shine back if I wanted to. Uh, but I was like, well, the main shine on his reflective jacket in most of the pictures, I'll post in the tripe right hand corner, there it is and it, it the the main shine is the silver metallic band between the yellows so i was like well i'll go ahead and try to mix my pearl in so instead of using like a titanium white to to bring down the tones of those yellows i do go ahead and use that uh, metallic pearl and it although it did uh, give it the, a decent look there you can see I'm testing the yellows. It does give a decent look. It doesn't have that that reflective uh, look to it. Uh, the paint when I applied it to the tan colors, it did look a little bit flat, and it, but it gives me great coverage. I'm really happy with how it turns out. Uh, it wasn't my initial intention, but I'm really cool with it. Now I tried to use pearl uh, pearl white there for the middle line. Uh, I do not use that in the final effect. I went ahead and used uh, a sterling silver instead, just to give it more of a metallic sheen. So there's my folk art multi surface sterling silver. I also have gunmetal gray folk art, and I was uh, thinking about doing like a, like a highlight layer uh, just above the the silver. In a, in a gunmetal gray just to give it some more of a shadow along that line and some separation between the yellow and the silver. His jacket in any of the pit photos do not show that and that was just me trying to go above and beyond to make my life difficult. So I decided to use, uh, leave the gunmetal gray off. I will bring that back in for other stages of the build as I paint my way up the actual sculpture. But here I am just kind of mixing that paint even more than after just shaking it, making sure that that sterling silver is mixed out good. And there it is, the yellow and the silver together. So I had sculpted some lines into the jacket right here. Now this is where I want to kind of ride those reflective lines around the sleeves. So he has two on the sleeves, and then he has one that goes across his chest and across that middle pocket. I'm going to post a picture in the top right-hand corner. Three, two, one. There it is. And then also we have one that goes across the bottom of the skirt of the jacket. I really was not intending to put that on there, but when I put this on there, because the aspect and the proportions are slightly different, because obviously this jacket isn't as, as long as the one he would wear on his body. So I had to make the lines kind of uh, thinner than I think they would have been. So although that... I'm able to get them on there uh, and I'm you know also note that I'm gonna kind of wrinkle these around some of the wrinkles so you'll see that they won't be straight all the way across his back they vary in height um, across the back because I want to show or depict that there's wrinkles on his back 
so that won't be a straight line. Uh, but, but what I was saying is that they, the lines are a little bit thinner than they would have been naturally. And I needed to create separation between the top band around his chest and the, t- the lower band around the skirt of the jacket. So uh, I have to ride that, that secondary lower line, which I'll do in a moment, pretty low. And it looks good when it's all done. It does. But just applying that silver lower line across the pockets on the sides of his jacket, it just fell off when I was doing it. It turns out great, and you'll kind of get that effect too. It just felt weird to cover up so much of that detail, wash and and dry brushing that I did on the corners of the pockets. It hurts. It hurts to cover up some of that work that you've put so much time into, but it, you have to trust the process, and you just have to go go for it. And uh, if something went wrong, then I would just have to paint it again. All right, so we're going to incorporate the yellow in. Again, my lines are a little bit rougher than his. I'm doing all of these by hand. No stencils uh, required here. I was thinking about making some water slides or some stencils, but I decided just to hand paint it. I thought it added some authenticity to it, and I just thought that it would be cool just to have some varying lines, uh, like they've been worn, they're not perfect, you know, some of the reflective uh, uh, tape is starting to peel off, just like a normal uh, reflective vest would be if you use it in the field. Uh, that's how mine is when, because I'm a blue collar worker. That's how mine is out in the field. It, it kind of deteriorates over time with a lot of wear and tear. So I'll, I'll go ahead and layer in my yellows as I go. Uh, I do introduce a more daffodil yellow from Folk Art Paint uh, uh, here and there along the way. Uh, but it, just sit back and enjoy the process of me applying these yellow lines. And then when I get the yellow lines in, I will come in with the uh, sterling silver yet again, and I will define the middle silver band just so that I can make that a little bit uniform and make it feel like that that center uh, metallic uh, band that goes all the way around the center is uh, just a piece of tape uh, that hasn't been really worn down so much as if the yellow has if that makes sense so sit back and enjoy and then we'll catch back towards the end of the video
All right, you guys. So there I am just applying a little bit more silver to that middle line and cleaning up those edges just a little bit. Uh, it looks pretty good overall. Now these colors are very bright, very new, and uh, they're not going to stay that way. But for the most part, I'm really liking how they're looking. Um, I still think that that bottom reflective line is a little bit too close to the skirt of the jacket, but it needed to be there. I know it did. Um, so I'm hoping that once I get some um, some age and some dirt and grime and blend it with the actual tan background a little bit, it's going to really kind of make it feel like it's at home there uh, along that skirt of the uh, jacket. So overall, I'm very happy with how these turned out. I like that uh, the uh, silver is still reflective uh, and under light it does shift and uh, uh, change its uh, color reflection. So I do like that it's actually giving a little bit of a reflection off. So I'm hoping that no matter what shelf he has this sitting on, if there's a light that's cut on or something, then as he walks around the room or looks at it uh, out of the corner of his eye, he does see that that, that uh, silver does shift in color. So there I am, I'm just using a, a light just to kind of show that, you know, it, uh, it does change in, uh, in reflectiveness as you kind of shine lights on it. Uh, and it kind of does uh, show the raised edges and the uh, difference in texture on the arms and around the pockets and things like that. So very happy with how these turned out. So let's turn around and let's go ahead and add some grunge to these just to make them blend into the background a little bit more to make them feel like they've already been with the jacket the uh, entire life cycle. So for this, I am also just going to be using a watered down uh, uh, burnt umber wash uh, and I'm just going to apply this in light layers over the overall uh, uh, wrinkles in the divots that I had previously washed out. And then once I get these in place and I kind of like how the actual wrinkles are shaded and shadowed, then I'll come in with a, a very, very washed down um, raw sienna and I'll go over a little bit of the yellow here and there. I do try to keep it as much off of the silver as possible, but I do want to get some grunge on those yellow portions just because it's such a bright color that uh, during wear and tear, those would probably be the first thing to get dirtied out and, uh, and you know, deteriorate or, uh, or just have a bunch of grime on them in the in, in his uh, metalworking studio so just enjoy this process and then we're nearing the end of this video again this is number nine in the overall tumblr series uh, and I'm hoping that M uh, mad Mike is really enjoying watching these videos seeing how his item is created uh, in a longer form uh, of format content so super happy with how it's turned out All right, so here's that raw sienna wash that I was talking about. Now I'm just just kind of uh, very, very watered down, run this over the yellow portions and kind of blend it into the overall tan background. Now, like I said, it's super, super watered down. So it's kind of sitting into any of the little uh, paint brush strokes that I already created when I applied the yellow. Obviously this, there are paint brush strokes there because I put them on by hand. And the goal is that it kind of blends it into the background just a little bit. And it kind of just adds a layer of uh, dirt film to those yellow uh, uh, reflective tape portions. I really like how these are looking. Uh, I think that adding the grunge really just blended them into the background a lot better. What do you think guys? I really am digging it. I really like how this turned out and as we work our way up this amazing sculpture it is really coming to life even more and more and I can't wait to get to the next video which will be video number 10 in the overall build and that will be where we are painting his face, his hair, and the topper all in one video. Again, thank you all for taking the time to watch this awesome part of this amazing build. Uh, it is uh, exceeding my expectations in every way. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like, and let me know in the comments what kind of projects would you like to see in the future. Again, thank you for all you do, guys. I will catch you on the next video. Later.